All right, so a check valve. So when refrigerant's flowing this way, the check valve is closed. Refrigerant can only go through the metering device, which drops it from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture. Now refrigerant's going in the opposite direction. It hits that check valve and it opens and allows the refrigerant to bypass it. Free flows like the meter device is not even there. Follow me? Yes. Now here, my check valve is facing the opposite direction. Here, there's a check valve and that check valve closes. Refrigerant can only go through the metering device. In this mode, when refrigerant's going this way, it hits that check valve and goes right through the check valve like it's not even there. So how many metering devices do I have on a heat pump? Two. 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 How many is being used at one time? One. One. So the one outside is being used in the winter and the one inside is being used in the summer. summer. Follow me? Yes. So I'm only going to use that meter device, this meter device, in the summertime. In the wintertime, it bypasses, goes around, that check valve opens like it's not even there. This check valve closes, so the refrigerant has to go through the meter device. What happened if I, this check valve stuck open? It would, there would be nothing causing a pressure drop, right? My refrigerant would be moving, but it wouldn't be changed. I wouldn't have high pressure and low pressure, and I'd have major problems. Well, either way, it's liquid and vapor. It'd just be pure liquid. But I would have some pressure difference just because of the size of the pipes, but I wouldn't have a pressure drop. So without a pressure drop, I couldn't be absorbing heat. I wouldn't be boiling it from a liquid to vapor. I wouldn't be lower than the outdoor temperature. And over here, uh, I wouldn't be able to build the pressure up to make it warmer than the indoor temperature to reject any heat. I wouldn't be able to condense anything. It would just be the refrigerant would just be pretty much free flowing through there. And would the refrigerant make it to the compressor? Could. Very well could. How common is that? The dollars get stuck. Um, fairly uncommon, but it happens. Yep. Uh, we'll show you a little different way later on of how they've uh, designed it to where that pretty much can't happen. Yep. So far, so good. Now, we've talked about the reversing valves. We're going to have to cut those pipes. We've talked about uh, adding a metering device with check valves, so that way we don't have to cut those pipes. But what problem did we have? Oh, Our liquid line filter dryer. So what we're going to do we is we're going to use a bi-flow liquid line filter dryer. And it has arrows going either direction. It's a bi-flow filter dryer. It's a bi-flow liquid line filter dryer. You can only go in what line? Liquid, liquid line. line. It's a bi-flow, which means it can flow in either direction. Bi-flow. That's right. It goes both ways. It flows to the left to right or right to left. I've got that bi-flow going both ways. Let's see what I did with my filter dryer. Flow filter dryer. All right, well, I don't know where that went either. But I really don't want to So we'll, I'll show you one here shortly. But the filter dryer has an arrow, has two arrows on it. It goes either direction. Can you use a bi-flow filter dryer and a regular air conditioner? Yes, you can. Yes. It's a waste of money. They're fairly uh, more expensive. But uh, the good thing is you don't have to worry about which way it goes. So if you have somebody that can't understand the flow of refrigerant and understand the refrigeration cycle, you can give them a bi-flow filter dryer, and it doesn't matter which way they hook it up, it will flow. It will work correctly. But what you cannot do it's put a single regular filter dryer in because everything it collects on this side, when the recycle reversed, it would dump all those contaminants back out into that system and it would clog up our metering device or anything else in the system. Yes, sir. Well, the way that you do with the chip bulbs for the metering devices, uh, yeah. would, when someone doesn't want to buy a bi-flow liquid, uh, liquid, liquid line filter dryer, 
wouldn't you couldn't do the same thing with, with two liquid lines? One you could. this way, that way, and then one restricted uh, check valve and one wouldn't. You could. You could. You could do that. There's some people that just wouldn't wouldn't want to waste extra money, and even though it'd be saving them in the end. Okay, so you could do that, but by the time that you bought two filter dryers <laughs> and you bought two check valves, uh, lost my red marker. So you could, but then you would a um, a biflow filter dryer is. Um, <laughs> It's like one and a half times more expensive than a than a single flow filter dryer. So by buying two individuals, you're already more expensive. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to buy these check valves separately, and the check valves you're looking at they they cost more than the filter dryer. Okay. So if you look at uh, the filter you're looking at one, two, three, four about four times more expensive, plus the time of copper brazing, brazing rod, all that to hook it up. So nobody, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I've never seen that. I have seen people put s simply one-way filter dryers in because if somebody's going to screw up, they're going to screw up in the wrong way completely. So that will happen more than anything. But a bi-flow filter dryer inside is this. Basically, the refrigerant is flowing through the desiccate in one direction no matter what. It has little check valves in there inside of it that keeps that happening. So it kind of does that already but it just does it all for you so it's a liquid line filter dryer by flow flows in either direction it's nice simple questions how come is it to see no <laughs> on ductless units like here, they don't have uh, filter dryers on them they use screens and that's what they have to be critically critically done right um, other than that, they should always have one, but the big problem is there's usually one inside the outdoor unit and that's the one that people um, notoriously leave in there, even though they do work on it. So I've seen, I've already seen it, it's not one at all, but there's a restriction in there. Well, that's not good. <laughs>